Good afternoon and welcome to JCH Online, episode 189. I'm Greg. And I'm Val. And we're here today to share with you an interview with one of our friends, Dr. Linda Jones. She's an author and a person who has founded a powerful ministry to women. She founded uh, Women of Worth Ministries that creates uh, tools to teach the truth of God's word and to share the radical love of God to help heal, grow in faith, rebuild, and transform your life and be released to impact your community. So that is our guest today, and it's Dr. Linda Jones, and she'll be with us in a couple of minutes. She's sitting in the green room right now. God bless you, Dr. Jones. Thank you for being here. Um, so we are in the final day of our three-day Build a New Comfort Zone Challenge, and we still have the VIP experiencing happening tonight at 5 p.m., two hours from now. That is taking place. And if you want to be a part of that to where you'll be able to witness three hot seat sessions that we're having with, um, with uh, people that are joining us, uh, kind of like laser coaching, just really quick coaching sessions with people about their new reality, questions they might have, things that they could do to improve on what they've already built. And so that is happening tonight at 5 p.m., and uh, with the VIP, you'll get all of the uh, videos of the three-day sessions and the VIP sessions as well. And it's a lot of content and good experience as well. The God First process is something that we've talked about at length within this week. And the reason we have is because the God First process will help you to overcome all of the things uh, all of the uh, works mentality that you might have in your faith with God, where you think you have to earn his love, earn his attention, earn his respect, earn, 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 and do things just right so he isn't mad at you and ticked off at you. Well, in the God first process, you're going you're gonna to find out who God really is. You're going to discover him without filters. You'll, you'll see what God is like, how he treats you, what he thinks about you. And when you meet him, in that form, without the filters of religion, the filters of your, your, your environmental conditioning, the filters of your cultural conditioning, you'll be able to see God as he is. And when you do, you'll love him and you'll trust him because he is so good. So we want you to enjoy that process by getting the God first process. The other thing we talked about is the advanced build a new reality course where we go into detail on developing you and setting your heart free from things um, that would hinder you and sabotage your own success. You know, sometimes you get into something and you're doing pretty good, but then stuff happens and, and you're back to where you started and you wonder, how does that happen all the time? Why is it always happening to me? Well, there are reasons for that, and there are solutions for that. And in the Advanced Build a New Reality course, we get into some of those. The other thing that we do in the ABNR is we build out frameworks. We have execution plans for all the key areas of your life. So in your finances, in your health, in your family, in your career, in your business life, there's execution plans for each one of these areas. It's a very comprehensive course. It's probably 18, 19 hours of content in it. There's a lot of material there. And in the days to come, we're going to be introducing something that's quite exciting that will help you to work your way through it in a very, um, in a community manner. It, it's going to be beautiful. So that is coming up. But the advanced Build a New Reality course we have on sale at a 90% discount. So you can get it, get it there. All right. And I just want to make sure everybody remembers that we'll be ending earlier than normal today at about 4.30, which is about an hour and 25 minutes from now because of tonight's VIP. That's right. And Val, you've got this coming up. Oh, yeah. Six days of praying in the spirit. So this is our fourth module. I've done three of them so far, six days each. And it is $6 for the week, a dollar a day. And I share a scripture every day about Holy Spirit, about who he is, or what his function is in our life and in the kingdom. 
And then we pray in tongues from that scripture. And the goal of it is for you to build yourself up. Uh, this isn't about praying for your friends or your family or your city. That will come after you build yourself up. So that's the goal. And it has been a, a very enriching time for myself personally. And I'm thinking that from the testimonies we've received, that it's also been an enriching time for others. Amen. Very, very cool. Very cool. Okay. We want to introduce Dr. Jones. So I'm going to read from her about page on her website. <laughs> Dr. Linda has been supporting and encouraging women through ministry for over 30 years. She's a wife, a mother, survivor of abuse and divorce, one who has struggled with a deep sense of unworthiness. Her passion is to equip and empower women to be healed, restored, to live the life they desire, a life of freedom, joy, purpose, as they grasp their true identity as a child of God. Dr. Linda founded Linda P. Jones Ministries and Women of Worth Ministries, created tools to teach the truth of, of the Word of God, share the radical love of God that can help you heal, grow in faith, rebuild and transform your life, and be released to impact your household, community, the marketplace, the nations, for the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. Hallelujah. Through media, she teaches biblical truths and are relevant to every aspect of your life. With her deep insight into the Word of God, she brings inspirational answers to your burning questions. Dr. Jones is known for her easygoing teaching style and interacting with people in a personal, practical, and profound way while she gives you the tools to forge a brand new life of wholeness and impact. Well, we've been able to meet Dr. Jones in person on Zoom and have had conversations yeah. with her. So we are blessed to introduce a friend of ours, Dr. Linda. Hello, could you hear me? We got you loud and clear. God bless awesome. you. Thank you so much. It's so I'm excited. <laughs> it's so good to have you here, Linda. Thank it's you so much for the invite. Um, I feel very special guest. I feel very like a special guest, yeah. <laughs> you certainly are. You're a very special guest of ours. Um, we're very excited to talk with you about your book, Journey to a Divine Encounter, Defining Moments That Lead to Destiny. So uh, what is, we lost her. Uh-oh. Oh, like completely. Yeah. She okay, she'll come back. She'll come back. She'll come back. Um, I'm going to answer Sarah's question-ish <laughs> kind of question, statement. I would like to attend Val's course on Monday, but would like to pay from Canada. If you would like to do the same, send an email to emily at support at courtsofheaven.ca, and she will get you all set up to pay for that from within Canada. Yeah. I wonder what okay. happened. I hmm. Yeah, like she disappeared completely. Uh well, she's not getting raptured, just so you know. <laughs> we're we're that'd be, here. That'd be bad. That'd be bad. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Awesome. So um, funny. We'll just make another announcement. We're doing a, a live master class on Saturday, March the 9th mm -hmm. at Ark Church in Lloyd Minster, Saskatchewan. This is uh, about two and a half hours from Edmonton. And we're there on Saturday and Sunday. So if you're in the region, come and join us. Uh, there's a small registration fee of $47. And you get uh, all the uh, audio recordings and you get the resources that are going to be made available with the, with the master class. So it's going to be interactive. It's going to be a lot of interaction, a lot of activation. Going to walk through models mm -hmm. on how to do this and then do it. And so if you want to learn how to do spiritual warfare the right way, this is the master class to take. It's the first time Greg has taught it in person like this in Ever. this format. So yeah. it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to doing it. All right. Here she is again. She is back. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch buttons you don't know anything about. <laughs> Greg knows nothing about that. I've never done anything like that before. I'm the yeah. one. I just clicked on a button. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so glad you... You're tech savvy enough to come on back. That's awesome. That's good. Okay. So you wrote the book, Journey to a Divine Encounter, Defining Moments That Lead to Destiny. I love that. I love that idea. Defining moments mm -hmm. that lead to destiny. Because I know in my own in my own life, when the Holy Spirit showed me the courts of heaven, 
that was a defining moment that defined my destiny. Mm. And and it has it has created a path for us that is just so remarkable that I never thought we would ever be on this path. But that when I saw the title, I was like, man, that's so true. This is so good. So what inspired writing this book, Linda? Tell us about that. Well, it was funny. It was many years ago that this was written. I was invited to speak to a ladies group and I was told the topic. Now, these, these were the years before I knew anything about speaking or anything. But of course, I was so excited. I said, yes. And the, the topic turned out to be like two sentences. How to move from the place you are to where God has destined you to be and to let go of hurts, pitfalls along the way to your destiny. No, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so I, I really didn't think twice. I just said, yes. And then when I got off the phone, I went like this. Oh, my God. What am I going to talk about? <laughs> I hadn't, that is the truth. I hadn't a clue. I can still, I'm still in the room where it happened. And I heard the Lord say, Ruth. And I thought, yes, I love Ruth. So I just started to dig into Ruth with that two sentence that I just took to two, two um, line sentence that I just read and just try to find those things that how did she get to the place God has destined God destined to for her to be and how she let what were the pitfalls along the way that she had to encounter to get okay. to that place and that evolved in um, a book and it's been sitting since I'm ashamed to say but I'm it's about 2005. This this is not like something new that I came up with. And I'll go back to it and add to it and add to it, you know, and pick at it and just put it down. And then just about a little bit a while ago, I thought, I'm going to get some of these books that I have sitting on my uh, yeah. files out. So that's how this came around. I love I love it that you did this. You know, mm -hmm. so often people have ideas. And, and they die on the table of I'm too afraid to try. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so glad that you you took the, the time and the energy to, to put it together. Yeah, I'm glad too. I love Ruth. When I grew up, I want to be just like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would Ruth do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, W-W-R-D. <-R> <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next question, Linda. How does the book mm -hmm. guide readers in recognizing and responding to their own defining moments that could lead them to their destiny? Well, first, um, this book of Ruth represents a narr uh, narrative, but it's like a prototype illustrating how each decision and acts of faith led her closer to her ultimate purpose. Hmm. And, and through the story, readers are encouraged to look for the significance in their daily lives and the daily choices and the potential impact that these could have on their, you know, their life path. Because really, Ruth didn't set up for a divine encounter. She just happened to be making the right choices as she mm. went along. And I, that's what? why I'd like to, when I grow up, I want to be like her. Because this woman just had a, an amazing sense of discernment and she just made the right decision. And so it's a sort of a template that we can look at and also not to... Um, not to belittle the, the 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 moments that we think are you know are not important mm -hmm. in our lives mm -hmm. because they're all really like stepping stones they're like little paths that lead us you know god is leading because you know he has our lives in his hands you know so that's one of the things and the, it further um offer practical insights and reflection and it's designed to help individuals introspect and into identify their own moments of decision and potential divine encounters. Right. Mm. So wow. the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And sometimes, you know, we just do things what we think are haphazardly. And um, then we find out what wow, that was a God move all along, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. yeah. And I, I think a good way to a good phrase to apply to that is that we're just naturally supernatural. Yeah. Naturally who we are, but in retrospect or in hindsight, we can look back on our life and go, wow, that was a really supernatural moment. 
Right. It just felt so natural that's at right. the time. You know, that's, that's a really good point because sometimes you might not recognize that what you just went into or the decision that you just made was a destiny moment mm -hmm. you know you don't exactly. in, when it's happening you yeah. don't realize you won't realize it exactly yeah and, one of the like, things i did in the book was i kept on um referring back because not only i love the book of ruth but i love ruth because her life so much mirrors mine in so many ways and so uh, as you read the book you would have seen where i made the allusion to my life situation mm -hmm. that was similar and and each reader has that opportunity to do that because they mm. will find themselves in the book of Ruth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. I, I managed to get halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we had the benefit of uh, getting an editor's copy so that I could read as much as I could before today. So um, right, yeah. I don't need to finish the last half, but, oh, well, but I enjoyed a few it. mistakes in what you had, but I, it's already, um, it's already up and published on Amazon, actually. You oh, okay. It. Yes, the paperback, well, the paperback, but not the um, not the ebook yet. But for those who are ready to have it, it's on Amazon right now. Excellent, okay. excellent. I'm gonna look so, that up while you. Yeah, Val's the next question. Going to do that, and she'll put a link in into okay. the comments here that okay. folks can go there and pick it up. I can actually give you the link without having to use the Amazon long thing. It's um, lindapjones.org forward slash divine encounter all one word With two e's divine encounter, encounter. yeah that okay. should take you that should take them straight to amazon lindapjones.org forward slash divine encounter okay let's try it <laughs> if it doesn't, then you go to Amazon and get the whole long thing. <laughs> well, we have we have a special link that we can get. It's a it's a short link that uh, yeah, you're able I to shorten it somewhat. What do you use to shorten? Um, uh, we have to go to our account to do that. But, yeah. Oh, okay. But it's okay. It worked. Yeah, yeah it worked. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. Wonderful. Um, honey, you made some comments about some of the things that you read in her book that um, I thought were interesting. So one of the first things that stood out to me, I always like to make note of, oh, wow, I really like that statement. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it might have been, it was in chapter one. Mm -hmm. You said, what's in your history is no match for your destiny. Mm -hmm. And I love that because so many times we live in regret. We live in, oh, I've made too many mistakes or God is probably mad at me or, 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 right? Fill in mm -hmm. the blank. Mm -hmm. And so I really love that statement. What's in your history is no match for your destiny. And the scripture you referred to was 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God, we are new creatures in Christ. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away mm -hmm. and all things are new. So I, I really love that. Yes. Yeah. 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 And as you would see, Ruth had quite a, dot, a dotted uh, history. Mm -hmm. um, being um, a widow, she was childless. Being a Moabite was big strike against her because you know the Moabites were despised by mm -hmm. the Jews, and it was them who who hired um, Balaam to curse the Israelites while they oh, were in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And there is also a very ugly family secret. So I'll save that for later. That so she had a lot going on in mm. her history. And if she had looked at that, she was says, Well, I'm not going to go to Bethlehem. That's it. Not me and these people. But she, she was so risky. And see what was in a destiny. <laughs> I mean, there's it's absolutely no match because when you look into the genealogy of Jesus Christ, here she stands large and in charge, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wow. you know, until I read your book, um, I had never really, I guess, remembered about her being a Moabite and what that meant for where, like, to go live in Boaz's area, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the prejudice, the racial prejudice. Yes. I was, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go read that again. I need mm -hmm. to go read my Bible again. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, that was really courageous of her to do that. Yes. Yeah. knowing that's where she was going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that is such a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. The scripture that is there, but thanks be to God, 
that we are new creations in Christ. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Oh, second. I yep. said first. <laughs> Second exactly. Corinthians. Old things have passed away. All even got that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. So another question. Uh, what sets this book apart from all the other books on Ruth? Because there's a lot of people that do write about every book of the Bible. And I think Ruth stands out because she's one of the uh, one of the famous women in the Bible. You know, along with, um, along with uh, Deborah, and and then there's Ruth, and then there's uh, Esther, Esther, and Mary. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's famous women in the Bible. Ruth stands out among them, so she gets written about. Yeah. Now, what makes yours stand out from all the other ones? Well, to start with, it's a unique blend of storytelling, practical application, and spiritual insight. Now. Traditionally, in studying the books of the Bible, there you look for three things. You look for the historical purpose, the doctrinal purpose, forgive me for this word, and the Christological purpose, which is it points to Christ. Every book in the Bible must point to Christ. And because Jesus mm -hmm. said, you don't know me because you, uh, the scriptures speak of me. Mm -hmm. So every book you can, even when his, the, God's name is not mentioned, like in the book of Song of Solomon, you can find the you can find Christ in there a, a, a symbol or something representative. Now, to, so as I began to dig deeper into the Book of Ruth, I discovered something fascinating. We learn that Ruth, before Boaz, this is something we hear about. She was symbolic of us who mm -hmm. lived in the world and who lived in sin. And later on, when she encountered Boaz, she became a picture of the church. And Boaz is Jesus Christ, the kinsman redeemer, who, you know, who buys her back from this, who buys the church out of sin, you know, redeems the church. However, digging a little bit deeper, I discovered an encrypted revelation about the tabernacle, which God instructed I saw this picture of the tabernacle being played out, which God instructed Moses to build in the wilderness. Now, okay. the tabernacle was a prophetic projection of God's redemptive plan for his people. So I saw parts of the, the tabernacle concealed in this story. I didn't see all of it, but there was the door and the lava. <laughs> and, and I share that in the book. I went into detail making the 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 the. the making the connection between the scriptures in Ruth and how that looks like symbolically parts of, of, the, um, of the tabernacle. And that really blew my mind because I have never seen that anywhere else or heard of it. And um, unless somebody tells me I'm wrong, I really believe that's what the Holy Spirit showed me. The picture, yes, the book of Ruth is a picture of God's redemption, but God went a little bit f further by showing you glimpses of the tabernacle that mm. he instructed Moses to, mm. to, to build. So that for me was just really powerful. Wow. That is, that is quite interesting because you tie that into uh, the new Testament reality of temple, which is our bodies. We are now the temple of the Holy spirit and it, that's right. Exactly. A powerful weight then. And that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hmm. Don't ask the next also, question. Also, just I just wanted to add to that that why many books explore, explore Ruth's loyalty, her kindness, and virtues. Journey to a Divine Encounter emphasizes the concept of divine encounters as pivotal moments that can lead you to one's that lead to one's destiny. It is designed not to just to tell a story, but to engage the readers in a personal mm -hmm. journey of their mm -hmm. own of discovery and transformation. Right. Right. That is so good. Okay. Um, next question I'm gonna ask here is anytime you're going through life, you're never going through life alone. And stuff that you're doing, there's always people there to help and help out and and to give a leg up, provide connection, etc. Mm -hmm. And in Ruth's life, she had Naomi. And what do you think that um like what did you see as as you researched this? was the impact of Naomi in Ruth's life? You know, we celebrate Ruth. 
she has a book name after her. She's in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, she would have never have gotten there without a Naomi. Mm. Naomi is really the underpinning in this story. She, mm. one, one of the things about her is that she must have lived an exemplary life for, for Ruth to even dare leave Moab and follow her. Who, who does mm -hmm. that? Who picked mm -hmm. up? A life and follow uh, a bitter old woman that can't have any more children to give her a husband or anything like that. So there must have been something really special about Naomi. But also, she was a discerning woman to first allow Ruth to follow her and courageous as well. But what I noticed about her was once her season was over, she knew it was time to give back to a person who had sacrificed so much for her because Ruth really made some amazing sacrifices leaving Moab and her family behind and all the false gods because they, they didn't worship Jehovah, they worship these false gods. Mm -hmm. So at one point, you know, Ruth, um, Naomi was very bitter. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. And she was going on and on. At, so she had a defining moment in her life in chapter three. This is Naomi when she said, my daughter, I should be seeking security for you so that things will go well with you. <laughs> Boom, you know, she just like, she had an aha moment. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I've done grieving. I've been grieving yeah. and crying over the son, my sons, my husband for the last umpteen years. It's time mm -hmm. to do something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And so Naomi speaks to us uh, as us mature women who understand our season and purpose. Mm -hmm. When she said to Ruth, I have, remember she said to Ruth, what are you following me for? I don't have any more sons to give you. And if I did, would you stay till they grow up to get married? And she understood that though she didn't have any more sons, which means she didn't have anything else to birth. Mm. Mm. Right? She's saying, it, I, um, my personal productive season is over. Mm. But I can still reproduce by helping you to come into your destiny. So Beautiful. I see the power mm. of the Naomi, um, women who have already, mature women, well, I still have years to go, mature women who can help the Ruth come into their destiny. And there are lots of women, a friend of mine um, was t telling me, she said, you know, I have an old woman, she's about 96 years old and, um, and she prays to me. She said, that's all she does. She spends mm -hmm. all her life, all the rest of her days on earth. She's like an honor, I guess, just praying for me. Mm -hmm. because she doesn't, she's already fulfilled whatever, but she's still fulfilling destiny by praying for someone to help them in coming to their destiny. And that's what the power of Naomi is. I believe she herself had a uh, divine encounter. Ruth was not the only one with a divine encounter. Naomi was as well. That's interesting. You know, you reminded me of, of uh, a Naomi in my life, which was when I was a, a young man, I was living in Houston, Texas, and I was attending Lakewood Church. And there was a, um, a young evangelist uh, married to... Uh, this lady's wife, and, and I, I met her mother, this lady's mother. Her name was Tinema. She was the grandmother of five kids, and uh, her son was the evangelist. And so it was mother-in-law of this woman. And, and we got into some conversations, and she asked me, so are, did, has God called you to preach? And I said, yeah, I think he has. And she goes, you're going to need a strong woman. Mm. So I see what my daughter-in-law has to endure when my son is out preaching the gospel everywhere. Endure being the key word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, he, she, she had to take care of the, the home fort while he was out, out doing what God had put into his life to do. <laughs> and uh, she would look at me and say, you need a strong woman. And then she would pray for me. Mm. And every time that I was at church, not every time, but, you know, about once a month, I would go and see Tinema, and we would just stand and have a conversation, and she would pray for me. And she'd tell me, I'm praying, Greg, mm -hmm. that you have a strong woman in your life. Mm -hmm. And and I just value, I, I was just reminded of Tinema today. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And and what's really interesting about that is my name actually means bold and strong. 
Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I told Greg that, he's like, what? <laughs> God answered 10 of his prayers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Naomi was the, is the, is the New Testament. I think it's Timothy or Titus that talk about the old women teaching the younger women. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I have a little bee in my bonnet about that because I find that <laughs> we have younger women who don't want to be taught. They, you know, mm -hmm. they, they need, they, they don't realize the power of mentorship. Yes. And the value of the oh, wisdom of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm reading, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reading just a little bit here in chapter three of Ruth. Um, and what I see Naomi doing is giving Ruth instruction on what she didn't know would be of value yeah. and telling her to do certain things in a certain way mm -hmm. that got Boaz's attention that she yes. might not known about mm -hmm. or had the courage to do in the that's way that right. Naomi suggested doing it. That's right. And that's the, that's the advantage that you're talking about is mm -hmm. mentorship and coaching from older women mm -hmm. for the younger women and how much mm -hmm. better easier more effective would their lives be if they had that kind of input mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so is is that kind of the nature of your book um you know with regard to lessons that readers can get from your book and you know that they they can see in the story and they'll get pointers on those That's kind of right. things on both sides yeah and what i like um for example ruth's response was just epic she says everything all you say to me i will do mm. she didn't say i'm going to question she didn't say i'm going to pray about it and she didn't say i'm going to wait till god tells me what to do she says whatever you say to me i will do um and what i saw there was like an esther and um what's the name of the the the, the strode in the house of xerxes um Oh, uh, Nehemiah? No. no, no, no. The one who told her everything to do, what to, how to get to. Uh, oh, right, right, right. That was with Esther. Mordecai. Um, not Mordecai. Mordecai. No, it was. Oh, I'll, I'll find him. Oh, I'll yes. find him. I'll find it him. It starts with H. Right. Upstairs. Right. She says yeah. so. We. She did not. She didn't question as. Um, she didn't question Naomi's. Right at all because even what Naomi was telling her to do was a little bit risky go and lie down by a man's foot that yeah. was that's that was that was like an invitation to a sexual encounter yes in, in those days but she understood but <laughs> I love Ruth I mean she just did all the right things she had all the right moves she made all the right decisions she just said whatever you say to me I'm gonna do it and those were the moments that led her to her divine encounter, one of the many moments. Um, Esther was put under the care of Haggai. Haggai. Right. Yeah, Haggai, and who was in charge of the women. Mm -hmm. And um, and then he he told her exactly what to do, and she followed his she orders. She followed it. Yeah. The, there's a picture coming out here with Naomi and the Ruth Naomi, because I kept moving in and out of symbolism. Um, Naomi represents the Holy Spirit, who knows, and Haggai represents the Holy Spirit, who knows exactly what the king likes. Interesting, yeah. Right, and she and Naomi knew exactly what to do for Boaz, who represents Jesus. So she said, you know, she gave a whole long list of instructions, and I went through it. I took the that verse apart with every instruction to show you how what it meant and how what um ruth was supposed to do and so it was like following the holy spirit because he know what the king what the king likes amen honey there was something you saw in chapter two i remember you telling me about this that was that was so engaging. oh yeah yeah because it, it, it speaks to self-image and it speaks to you know what you'll find what you'll have courage to actually do you know Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, you quoted the scripture, two verses, Ruth 2, verse 8, and then 10. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not mm -hmm. go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. 
And then in verse 10, so she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that she should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And then you made this statement, or I might be paraphrasing at this point, but Boaz called her daughter, but she I saw herself, herself as a foreigner. Yeah. So there was an identity. Identity uh, crisis. Yes. Yeah. So those are some of the things Ruth had to deal with on her road to the divine encounter, which we all do. Mm -hmm. And the people there didn't make it easy for her because they never called her by her name. They call her um, Naomi's mother, daughter-in-law. They call her the, the Moabites. They never, mm -hmm. they kept on reminding her of her past, who she was. They never called her Ruth. If, if you read it carefully, you will see. And here is Boaz now raising herself, at least he's trying to, calling her daughter. But she is so, you know, self-effacing. Oh, I'm a foreigner. Mm -hmm. you know, because the people kept on reminding her that she was a foreigner. They called her the Moabites. And so um, she had issues that she was dealing with like everybody else, like we do. We have issues. And the, the beautiful thing about this story is that as we get down later i can't remember which chapter because i wrote the book but i can't remember everything in it <laughs> when she had that time with boaz on the threshing floor it was a time of as we went through the process i looked at the threshing floor and all that it meant it was a time of processing it represented a time of processing because the threshing floor is where you get rid of all the garbage and then you have the pure wheat left behind hmm. It was a time of processing. And by the time it was over, and, oh, I feel this. Uh, <laughs> Boaz was alerted in the night, that some, in midnight at that, that's very significant, that someone was lying at his feet. He turned and then he said, who are you? And you know that I know she had a, a defining moment. Uh, she she already had an encounter. She said, I am Ruth. Hmm. She was able to say who she was. She never said, I'm a foreigner. She said, I am Ruth, your maid servant. Would you take me under your wings? Wow. That, that's loaded because wow. she said, I know who I am. I'm a maid, so um, your maid servant. I know that I can serve you because I know who I am. We cannot serve adequately when we don't know who we are because we will always feel like we are being disadvantaged. But when you know who you are, you can. It doesn't matter if you clean the toilet bowls or you know you, whatever you you know who you are. So at that point on the threshing floor, Ruth came to the realization of. And that for me was the key chapter in the whole book of who mm. she was. And that set her on the road and that set her on the, the, probably on the last leg of the journey because it came a time that Boaz said to her, you sit still, I'm going to take it from here. That was the most power. I mean, that should be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, write the screenplay. Yeah, that's, that's your next that. assignment. The screenplay on, on Ruth. You know, Naomi said to her, you listen, I'm going to take care of things. And when she followed all Naomi's instructions, she came to the point where Boaz now said, you've done everything that you could. I'm going to take it from here. And that he did. And then he sent her home um, loaded with a whole bunch of, of wheat. And that is a, I mean, the book is so loaded with revelation. I'm sure I can write a second book on it and not... <laughs> You know, there's so much in that story. It is an amazing book. As you can see, I'm excited about it because I just love the story because I can so identify with this woman as well as and when you read the book, you'll begin to be able to identify with her. I and remember, uh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Ahead. sorry, no, you go ahead. I remember a pastor, Rod Parsley, I, I don't know if you might have heard of yep. him. Yep. He used to say, you don't read the Bible, you read the Bible. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I could see him saying that. <laughs> and, and I started to read the Bible because then you go further into it. You go into the lives yes. of, of the person and then it starts to do like that. Wow. 
I, yeah. I wrote a book called Out of the Ashes, which is, you're going to invite me back, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the Ashes, which I took to 13 women and I made their stories come alive because it, it's not going to tell you every nitty detail, but you know human nature, you know how we are. And human nature hasn't changed over the centuries, maybe some cultural differences, but human nature ha hasn't changed. And so we were able to see into the story in, in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that is so, so good. And I was going to say that at some level, Ruth must have already decided that she was going to identify with Naomi's family because Naomi was going back to her home, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ruth was like, no, no, I'm going with you. I'm not, I'm cutting ties. I cut ties already. Mm -hmm. And at some level, she must have decided, even, even though she still felt like she was a foreigner, that she was mm -hmm. going to identify with that mm -hmm. place that she was not from. That's, that took a lot of courage. And even though, like you pointed out, and I shared in the book about the poor self-image, it didn't stop her from moving on exactly you know, you know it didn't stop her and and for those of who are listening if they're struggling with self poor self-image it doesn't mean that it qualifies who you're going to be next week or yeah. a few months from now just keep on moving because mm -hmm. god is just he's taking you on a divine encounter yes absolutely that's so good um okay oh are you ready um i was just going to mention okay. this um there is we're linda's going to do a, a giveaway of a book and uh what you can do and we're going to help her with this is go to jchonline.ca slash contest put your name in and then a name will be drawn is that going to be drawn during the broadcast or is it going to be drawn at your leisure uh no Linda? emily is emily set it up so she's got it set up. So yeah, she'll if, she'll be coming in to help. Oh, and it'll be a wheel of names thing. Yes. Fine. No, I okay. So. I think so. Yes. <laughs> I have to confirm. She went to powder her nose. <laughs> okay. So if you want to have your name in for the book draw, then put it in, and uh, that'll go into the wheel of names, and then Emily will be able to spin the wheel and see who wins the names, and mm -hmm. and that'll be an exciting thing for. Uh, um, Anybody who wins is going to be mm -hmm. a great prize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I, I saw another thing here, honey, that you had talked about this part here. Okay. Uh, so this is another quote from your book. One of my observations mm -hmm. or something that stood out to me was, you may, be, you may be tempted to call it quits, to just give up the fight or question, did I really hear God? Was it my imagination? Was I over ambitious? Draw mm -hmm. strength from the many promises of God for the journey. Mm -hmm. Draw strength from the many promises of God for the journey. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, <laughs> I don't know what where Ruth draw her strength from. She just seemed to have that indomitable spirit. Well, she followed the God of Jehovah, so most likely she was involved you know with the torah and stuff like that mm -hmm. but if we are going to make the journey uh successfully like ruth did we there are going to be a whole lot of hurdles a whole lot of obstacles and you know mm -hmm. the chapters some of the chapters uh, i went into the hurdles that she had to overcome and some of the things that you are overcoming she did too and if we are going to make this journey <laughs> a successful one, we really have to draw strength from the promises of God. And, you know, you talk about um, here on, the, on JC Online, often we hear about it over and over, but, but the word of God, getting it into you, meditating on it and taking it, trusting what God has said. As Val said, she writes, she wrote scripture down and, and three by fours or whatever you have to do, <laughs> do it to get to that point where you can keep on going to the journey and you do not abandon the process. You don't abandon the process. What would have, what would hmm. it be like had she abandoned this thing in the middle of the, pro and she came to, to Bethlehem and what if oh, with all the crap she had to go through, she said, you know what? <laughs> I've, I just had enough. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm done with this. She would have not had a divine encounter and we would not have any 
any story, any prototype to look at and say, wow, this woman made it through all that. If she did, I can't too. Mm -hmm. So you don't abandon the process. You just right. keep on going knowing that there, like someone said to me, Linda, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that, is, that is so good. Perseverance, I think. Perseverance. Yes, is one of the and things. perseverance. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. like a perseverance is what builds the character. Is exactly. when you're when you're uh, in the middle of it, um, like in military terms, you're in the middle of the suck. You know, it's the <laughs> this is the worst of the worst, but you're still breathing. You can still move, so you can still do the job. And and that that's really what it gets to is that when you can persevere through those type of circumstances, you find out what you are made of. That's and right. that's and true. God knows what we're made of, but we don't know what we we're don't made know. of. And in those type of times, that's where you find out this is what you're made of. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about our, our Pakistan family in in uh, in Fazalabad. You know how difficult their circumstance is, and and yes. what they what they need to endure. You know, as they are are going through their Christian experience, and mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, you know the provision they need the. Uh, uh, protection that they need and and just the day to day of wondering if they're going to be attacked or persecuted or something it's a place and but you you find the perseverance and when you talk to folks that are in the middle of all that there is a depth to them in their character that that is rare and just really uh really appreciate that yeah no i just want to quickly bring up a comment. He's probably already gone, but Tim Doyle said, I have an appointment, so I have to leave soon. But before I go, I want to say thank you to Dr. Jones for sharing and to Greg and Val for inviting her so good. Yeah, so he's probably already gone because I missed the comment. But yeah. um, I want to just make another comment about that, about, uh, you know, calling it quits. Um, I often say to people, okay, so you want to give up. Now what? Now what? Yeah. What does it look like? Yeah. Now what are you going to do? You've given yeah, exactly. up, and and you could be just steps away from exactly you know the breakthrough or the result or the answer or the thing that you've been praying for. So you you give up or you call it quits, and and then what? And then you'll be even more frustrated because you gave up, you know. Yeah. And exactly. then it'll be the coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember when one of the things my I always was saying to my husband at a certain time in my season, one of my many seasons, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this <laughs> anymore. <Yeah. laughs> and he kept saying, you could. And I thought, I'm going to hit him because yeah. I can't. <laughs> but I, I took it. I kept taking it, you know. And it's like the disciples, when, G <laughs> when Jesus said to them, um, said, you want to go? You want to go? Yep. And they yeah. go like, well, to whom shall we go? Or are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. So I guess yeah. we're going to stick it out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. even though it is hard, it's it's going to be worth it. And and that's that's the beautiful thing about all this. Um, I, I want to just share screen to show people. You still have a chance to enter the draw. And uh, I'm just going to bring it up here. Enter the draw. And this is what the draw page looks like so you can win a journey to a divine encounter defining moments that lead to destiny by dr linda p jones and enter your first and last name into this box down here and uh, that will get you into the contest and and then we'll emily is going to be with us in a second She's going to do the wheel of names and we're doing that at 415 at 415. Yeah. Okay. So at 415, we're doing the draw. So be sure you have your name in there. If you want that to be uh, on there as well. So next up. Um, okay. You got, you got a question here. What advice would you give to readers who are on their own journey to finding destiny and purpose? Hmm. Well, first thing I would say is seek out a Naomi. You really need mm -hmm. someone who will be able to walk alongside you in this. Someone that's experienced, who've been there, done that. 
So you want a Naomi in your life very much. Mm -hmm. Stay humble. Stay humble to the process. You know what was so intriguing about Ruth? I, I mean, she, when she got to Bethlehem, she begged Naomi, could I go in the fields and work? I mean, you're, you're, you're a foreigner and you know these people don't like you. And you, the kind of work she will get was gleaning, which meant she only get what was dropped from mm. the, you know, which was the welfare system of that day, you know, make sure and drop something so the poor can collect it. So, so you have, so she was humble enough to say, look, I, I'm just going to do whatever it takes for us to, to get, get by. So stay humble to the process in, in the process, you know, because pride goes before a fall, but also um, promotion comes with humility. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Okay. Get a Naomi. Is there anything else? Selflessness and sacrifice pays off. She hmm. was selfless. Hmm. And today I had a, a live, I did a live devotion on, and I said to, um, sharing about the book, I said, Ruth was a giver. When Naomi couldn't give her anything, Ruth kept on giving. And what was beautiful about the relationship is, was that there came a time that it switched. And Naomi was the one that was giving to Ruth. Because mm. she said, sit still and I'm going to look after this thing for you. You you, you, you help me, I'm going to help you mm, find a husband, literally. Mm -hmm. So the selflessness and the sacrifice will pay off. So sow seeds, sow seeds along the way, no matter what. You, in, your, in your lack, quote unquote, in your difficulty, find someone else to, to serve as well. Because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to boomerang back, back to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. That's and good. and that helps. You know, I guess the thing also is when you start serving other people, there's such a sense of purpose in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That with your gifts, your talents, your abilities, that you start serving a community, you serve individuals mm -hmm. with the good that you have, then that brings such value to them. And and it's so purposeful, so meaningful. I I um uh, I saw a bit in a documentary called Happy, and it was the measurement of happiness in nations and individuals, different strata of society and culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the people being interviewed was a psychologist in uh, Silicon Valley, and her client base were all the multimillionaires and billionaires, mm -hmm. because these were tech nerds that would be in you know, head down, butt up, eighteen hour days eating ramen noodles for two, <laughs> three years, and then they build a product, and they build a company, and then suddenly they get bought out for three, four billion dollars, and they're instantly wealthy beyond their imagination, mm -hmm. and they've got this hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal, and and she said that was her practice was helping these men and women navigate this sudden wealth syndrome and the ones that did it well mm -hmm. all of them got involved in serving in some way mm -hmm. even as even even so far as to go into a soup kitchen and serving food mm -hmm. to the homeless mm -hmm. they would do it and they would find such meaning and such value in it mm -hmm. so you know i i think that's so wonderful you know to hear hear that as being part of your advice mm -hmm. Did you have something else here honey, that you were going to? Oh, let me see. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom from Val. <laughs> well, they weren't from me. They were from Linda's book. <laughs> I just, I mean, these are the things that I highlight, right? Like things mm -hmm. that stand out to you. So um, just that you, you actually talked a bit at the end of chapter three, I think, about a good attitude and, mm -hmm. It, you kind of touched on it there, but how does a good attitude, you know, factor into this in addition to everything you just mentioned? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, attitude is everything. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said attitude depends on your uh, um, direction, attitude or something like that. And Ruth, 
she could have had any attitude she chose to have. Simple. She could have been like yesterday. I was in one of those funk mood and I had a bad attitude. But <laughs> Ruth, no, you didn't. No, no, I, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a bad, bad one yesterday. For the whole day, I wanted to have a temper tantrum, and I just had it, and then I got over <laughs> myself. But um, Ruth chose, maybe she had some too, but it wasn't, we didn't see any, but Ruth chose her attitudes, and I went through several attitudes, that, and the first one that, that was really prominent for me was that she chose not to be bitter. Mm. She had every reason to be bitter. I mean, your husband dies, he leaves you childless, you, you, you lose your father-in-law, you lose your brother-in-law, and then you have to live with a bitter, complaining with mother-in-law, you know? Mm -hmm. And then she moves to Bethlehem and they treat her like a foreigner. I mean, but she chose not to be embittered. Mm -hmm. And so she had several powerful attitudes. She engaged herself in work. Right. And, you know, not only was she engaged in the work, she had, a, she had a, an exemplary um, ethic work, um, work ethic, exemplary work ethic. You know why? The people said, you know what? She works from morning to evening. They were watching her. They were watching her attitude. When the others were goofing off and having a cigarette or they, they you know, they sit around <laughs> chewing the fat, they said they were able, not Ruth, Ruth never said that about herself. They said, this woman works from morning to, to, mm -hmm. to, to the end of the day. She, she was just very diligent about how, I mean, she could not help but walk into a divine encounter. She just had these awesome attitudes. Oh, and one, one powerful one that was the first one before being embittered. She embraced God because she said to Naomi, right. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. So she made a commitment to Naomi, and she made a covenant with God. And that was one of the most powerful things that positioned her, her, that attitude, that decision that was a defining moment on her way to divine destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just bring me and Linda in here, honey. How do I do that? Okay. One moment, please. There we go. There we go. <laughs> if, you, if you don't want to be on, that's okay. No, I have to be because. Oh. Yeah. If right. I get well, I can be removed. Maybe. No, it'll shut the audio okay. off. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll get that fixed in the new place. <laughs> yeah. So that brings me to. Uh, it's in the next chapter, but you made this statement that what is in the heart comes to the surface, no matter how hard one tries to conceal it. Mm -hmm. So even if she was harboring, you know, bitterness, bad attitude, whatever, it doesn't, after a time, it would come to the surface. And I really liked that you pointed that out. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll copy the scripture that you quoted. It was in Luke 645. But then you, I think it was you who asked this question, what's in your heart? What's in your heart? So, we can actually examine ourselves mm -hmm. and say, what is in my heart? Mm -hmm. and if I don't want that to come to the surface, then maybe I want to deal with that. <laughs> that's, that's right. And so that's, notice I didn't say have to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the processing comes. That's where your personal thresh and flow experience will come, where God will start to sift away the chaff from the wheat. Because right. really where he wants to take us, where he wants to take you, there's no room for that. And it's simple, similar to the children of Israel. He had, look how many of them had to die in the wilderness because their attitudes were so bad he couldn't bring right. them into the promised land. Mm -hmm. A whole you whole know, generations that died. So yeah. Right, exactly. That's really good. It's really good. Just a reminder, <laughs> we're going to be doing a draw soon. You have about nine minutes to enter your name in the contest and that link will show up any second now. <laughs> um, okay, so next question. We didn't get, we didn't do this one, did we? Yes. You did? Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. I've gone through all my comments. <laughs> I've gone through all of our questions. Is there, any, is there anything else that has come to mind, Linda, while, while we've been all chatting? that you would like to add to all of this? 
Well, one of the things for sure is key lessons that I hope the readers and the audience here of JC Online Community that would be le left if they buy the book, what some of the lessons that they can take away from Ruth's story. And I know we talked about some along the line, dropping here, there, and there. But, you know, I was going over the 31 day prayer challenge, which I, I, I do fairly regularly. Some days I miss it, some days I don't. But this morning I was on the seven day seven. Then this morning, one of the things you said, Greg, was that the circumstances and situations you ha are in have value. Mm. Everything has value. Mm. And I, actually, I, I wrote it down. I, I went through all the things he said. I wrote it down in my journal. And that is one of the lessons I hope readers will take with them. The difficulty, the hell that you're going through. It might not look like anything valuable, but it has value. And, and and when I was reading that, I thought of my own life story, which I documented in my book called Soul Survivor. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was hellish. Never thought it would ever come to be a book because I didn't. I mean, I fought God for seven years before I bought, I wrote that book because I told him that my mother is alive. I can't write this book. Are you crazy? What did she get through all of this book? Well, she never did, thank God. But the value I was able to put in there and then people reading it would say, my goodness, this story is like my story. Are you sure this, this happened to you? So the, the things that you're going through, they become they become the foundation for what God is going to be doing in your life. It can become ministry foundation. You, you just didn't know. You don't know. So that's one of the things I hope the readers will take away with them, that everything in your life has value. Mm -hmm. we, we just talk about attitude choices and the courage and willingness to leave her comfort zone and establish a new reality. Does that like sound like something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she had the courage to leave her comfort zone in Moab yeah. and establish a brand new reality. Ruth's decision to leave Moab in an uncertain, you know, in it to move into an uncertain future highlights the courage it takes to step out of one comfort zone and embrace new possibilities. That's so good. So good. Um, just want to remind everybody you can get Dr. Linda Jones' new book on Amazon at lindapjones.org slash divine encounter. And that will get you right to the Amazon page where you can purchase it and if you've got amazon prime it's free delivery so okay. wherever uh, amazon is printing books in the world you can purchase this and amazon will deliver right to your house uh how many more minutes do they have 10 minutes uh you have five minutes to enter your name and uh and we're doing the draw at 4 15. and emily will come in and and do the wheel of names and uh we'll select a winner from those that are on here with us um you know, I, I was just thinking about, because I, I know a bit of your history, mm -hmm. just from the conversations we've had. And to see how God has redeemed that in your life is remarkable. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's something we've talked about so much that, like, when we do one-on-one -on -one sessions, there are, I, I do them all the time. And, and when I'm sitting with people and hearing their story, and, and what they write and say, here's the history of what happened. I'm like, how, yeah. how are they able to function? How are they able yeah. to even think and pull themselves together and, and look at you? You have your, your doctorate. You got your education. You, you've built a ministry. You're reaching across the world with, mm -hmm. with what you're doing. You're influencing lives. You're a thought leader in this area. And, and um, it's beautiful to see that redemption. That's kind of in, is that covered also in your, in your book as well? Yeah. I mentioned, um, yeah, I put pieces of my story, you know, on the, on the laid over, over Ruth's story. So yes, I, that's mm -hmm. mentioned in the book to some extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's so good. I, I wanted to brag on your website too, Linda, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, because <laughs> you have a beautiful website. Thank and you. So I'm going to just show you all Linda's website. So this is her about page. Um, you can find it at Linda P. Jones Ministries. Look at that. New release. 
and uh, I love your set as well. Is this just in your house where you yes, film? That's, that's my. That's for real. <laughs> that's what we need to do. That I, I like that. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, I love yeah, it. It's for real, as you can see. My books are there, and it. Yeah, it's for wow. Real. Now, did you read all those books? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit of them. Quite a bit. So there's some more of the books that Linda has written: Twelve Principles for Soul Survivors, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's the courses. Th then on-demand courses. Uh, this is Women of Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, mentorship Academy Women for ninety seven dollars. All these are at ninety seven dollars. Yeah, there's a whole bunch more. There's just some of them there, but if you press, you can see the whole bunch. Yeah, online courses Beautiful. there. They are excellent. Love this. So listen, get into Linda's orbit, and and get a part of this because she, as you can tell, is very knowledgeable about what she does. Well researched and you'll get excellent value out of everything that you get here look at that good job and, Love and this. you know i have to make this comment well i don't have to but i'm going to <laughs> um um you can always tell someone who you know linda's obviously got a lot to offer she's done books and courses and everything but linda still takes other courses yeah linda's still in growth like she's still realizing that there's value in learning you know continuing to learn from others we we do the same thing we enroll in other courses mm -hmm. and uh you know like last night we left our vip at like 10 to 7 and i ran in and you know got on another zoom <laughs> yeah <laughs> because sometimes you know sometimes you just want to be live on them but um yeah we can never stop we can always be growing I won't say we can never stop growing, but it's more about the option of continuing to grow and mature. And, you know, you made the comment about mature women, you know, teaching the younger women and mature isn't just your age. That's right. Maturity comes with experience and how you responded to those experiences and how you manage them in your heart and in your thinking and in your beliefs. And that's what's so beautiful about this newest book of yours is it really does bring that out with Naomi. And then I would imagine, it doesn't tell us in the Bible, but I would imagine as Ruth became more mature that she also started to mentor younger women because of the experience that she had with Naomi. You know, I I have women in my life that I still talk to and ask questions of. And yes, they're older than me, but it's the experience. Mm -hmm. It's the experience that you're looking for and the maturity of the response to circumstances, to life. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's a really beautiful thing. Awesome. This is so good. The book of Ruth is, is a treasure trove, really. Amen. Really so good. does anybody have a question that they'd like to ask Dr. Jones? Do you have a question? I'll just quickly bring up this comment. This is Melissa. This was such a treat, and I can't express how this was so on point with my situation. Me and my friend have been saying we are Ruth and Naomi and just did a Bible study on it. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Can't make that up, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So if you have a question, uh, we'd love for you to be able to ask it. I have another comment. Uh, Sinzor said, get a Naomi. I have been having a Naomi all this time, and I did not know. I shall indeed see her differently going oh, forward. Interesting. So that's a really good point. You might already have a Naomi, or who would be a male counterpart to this in the Bible? <sighs> who would be a male guy? Hey guy who was with Esther that was right. she was, yeah, yeah that'd be a, uh, yeah. Paul um Paul was mentoring yeah. Timothy Titus and all of them. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. you might Part already have us. someone in your life just like Sinzor. And yeah. it's just uh, it's like, oh, oh my goodness, I do have a Naomi in my life. Yeah, somebody that you work out your thoughts with. Mm -hmm. with. Yeah. There, there's okay. somebody go ahead. Sorry, I just want to add one thing about a Naomi, about 
our Naomi is that we tend to take for, them for granted. And I want to say, honor your Naomi's. Mm, yes. Honor them. Yes. Find so, ways to honor them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So Wendy's got a question. How do I handle the anger toward a family member that's a narcissist? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person because I have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just have to pray myself down and just, you know, um, in this particular family member, I have to see beyond what, because I know what caused it or what were the factors that, you know, what you call um the environmental factors that led to this and that's how i have to deal with it because then i realize doesn't know better and yes i, I have to be really patient mm -hmm. but at the same time not let let the individual control you yes because they tend to be controllers and then they tend to want to blame you for everything so you have to find a way to put it right back square mm -hmm. on them it's it's always somebody else's fault it's never theirs, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, but if, if Wendy, if you're referring to you are having anger toward them, then honestly, and I used to be an angry person, so talking from experience here, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, just, not just giving unwarranted advice, um, we're responsible for our, our anger. And if we don't know how to manage it, then it's the Lord that helps us and uh, you know, I asked the Lord many times, I said, I don't know why I'm angry. I want to be set free from this. And he did. And so it's uh, asking him to show you how to manage it. And that might seem like a really simplistic answer, but it's really just the truth. And uh, what Linda referred to there was praying for justice for the environmental circumstances in the life of that person that has kind of steered them down the path of becoming that kind of a person. It's not without cause. There's always a cause. That's right. And it's the adversary. And so it's about getting justice for them so that those things that impacted their heart will no longer have that effect on them. And then, you know, then look out and be ready for the change because Greg wasn't ready for the change of the not angry Val. That was and a big change. And he, he then was realized, I now want to um, change my response to what I'm, I, I'm always perceiving that this is always going to be the case, that Val's going to be angry, and now she's not angry, and now I don't know what to do. <laughs> right? I like so. Benita's statement, I've started to bless my enemies. Hmm. It's really freeing. Jesus did say that. Bless those who curse you. Yes. Pray for those who despitefully right. use you and mistreat you. Mm -hmm. Because they treated the prophets in the Old Testament like this. And great is your right. reward in heaven. So rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Mm -hmm. But bless them. That's a great strategy. Yeah. Excellent. And just one more comment before we do the draw. Um uh, Sinzor said, I agree, Val, mentoring isn't about age, but experience, knowledge, and skill as well, which I think Naomi really exemplifies, That's right? right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, this is so good. Now, before we do the contest, Dr. Jones, would you pray for everybody mm -hmm. that is here today that um, maybe in a Naomi-like or a Ruth-like situation? Where they today might be their defining moment day, and they mm. don't even know it. True. We do pray for everybody that way. Sure. Father, thank you. we just thank you. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us, yes. and the word and and the revelation from your word. You 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 don't leave any stone unturned. You 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 have everything that we need for life and godliness. They they are in your word. And we thank you for this story of Ruth and for the many who are uh, joining, who have joined us and will be joining by way of the, the replay, who are in a Ruth situation, mm. but they don't have a Ruth attitude and they're struggling with the difficulties of life, the adversities that, are, that keep coming one after the next after the next. Lord, I pray that you will just grace them 
with the what I would call the, the Ruth anointing to be able to 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 stay in the process to be able to see this from a God view from your 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 perspective to understand that these are defining moments in their life that that everything in their life had all their situations have value and that you are working all things together for good because they love you mm -hmm. and if they stay true to the process you're about to bring them into something that they, they that will literally blow their mind so i pray for them for courage for strength for tenacity for that indomitable spirit that that keeps mm -hmm. that keeps holding on that relentlessness that would say i will not give up uh, as job says i will wait till my change comes and so i pray for them for that for the naomi's who uh, would have suffered loss, widowhood, suffered loss of children, but they are still in the grieving process. I pray, God, you're the comforter. But I thank you, Lord, you're going to bring them out because there's purpose beyond. There's more in their, their, their future than what was in their history. So I thank you, Lord, that you are going to raise them up, that they too have purpose. If they feel like, oh, I'm too old and I'm tired, what is there left for me to do? I pray that they will find, they will seek out some rules to, to, to mentor. They will seek out uh, where they can help, where they can undergird someone, where they can encourage someone with their life experiences because nothing is wasted. You said to pick up all the crumbs and gather them up so let nothing be wasted. So every crumb and every part of our lives and us fallen look like it's fallen to pieces you will not let anything be wasted so i bless these all the women and the men of this community and those looking on from the other places god that let them know that you you are the overarching one over their lives and you are bringing them into a divine encounter and not just one divine encounter it's not a one-time thing in mm. there many divine encounters along the way many yeah. defining moments that lead to and and these aha moments and more than anything god they will record they will make a record of it so they can look back and say ah look what god has done so Lord, yes. we bless you tonight, and I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share. When 2005, I was asked to speak, <laughs> didn't have a clue that it would lead to this. That was a divine encounter. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much, Lord, for yes. the divine encounters in, in Greg's life, and and Val and Greg, and uh, just coming into this space. So thank you so much, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wow. Thank you for praying. Yeah. That is awesome. Okay. Now we are going to do a draw here um, for Linda's book, Journey to a Divine Encounter. And if you don't win, go to this website and it will be taken right to the Amazon link where you can pick up a copy of her book from Amazon and uh, you'll be blessed by that. All right. The here, book here. will be out soon. So it's just a paperback for now. Yeah. So the uh, what she's referring to would be the audio. The no, or there's the, the paperback. The paperback. Yeah, the paperback okay. is, and then and then Kindle version. Uh, yeah, that is, is going to be a while. Kindle version's not out yet, but it will be out by earliest next week. But Excellent. just hang on, it will be there. Excellent. Awesome. Oh, this is exciting. Two draws in one day. Are we ready to dance, everybody? <laughs> Get ready to dance. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite time of day. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle Morris. Morris, you have won a book. Are you still with Are us? Are you still with us? Yeah, that's the question. Should I set a timer? <laughs> we actually didn't stipulate that. Yeah, I think so, this. she's the winner. Yeah, she's the winner. because right. We not. didn't stipulate that they had to be live. Okay. All Congratulations, right. Danielle. I'm going to write her name down. Go ahead, Emily. Uh, what would be her instructions here? Uh, I guess email me at supportaccordsofheaven.ca. <laughs> I don't know. 
And then, then we'll have Emily liaison with you, Linda, with regard okay, to sure. all yeah, we'll, the emails we'll of us and everything like that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. My, my people will contact your people. We'll figure it out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And besides the book on my website, there are a whole bunch of free resources that they can just sign up for as well. Perfect. Beautiful. 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 Congrats, Danielle. You have won. I'm so glad for you. Praise the Lord. Well, Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Thank what you. What a delightful for having me. It yeah, this was a great interview. Really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Thank really you. Enjoyed. Thank you so much. Thank so you yes, much. we will have you back in the future. Awesome. Talk about your one of your other books or courses or whatever you want to talk about, and because mm -hmm. I think I felt it resonating with our community really yes. well, and um, and I think it would be. Um, be a value for everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I love that very much. As you know, I love to talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we have so enjoyed your company today. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you so much. I have enjoyed being here. Enjoy being a blessing to your company. Yeah, the community that I'm part of, anyhow. I'm yes, you are. You are a vital part of our community. We mm -hmm. love that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to put you in the green room. I want to make one more comment. Sure. that um, for people listening, even on the replay, don't assume that you don't have something to offer. Don't assume that you can't be a Naomi because you've experienced things that somebody else you come across in your life That's might right. be going through mm -hmm. and you, you might be able to help them. And it doesn't matter how small it may seem it will be really big to that person. Mm -hmm. And so don't assume you have nothing to offer. I, I think that's just so important because um, then we'll miss the opportunity to be a blessing in somebody else's life. Um, I, I, I have to tell you, I've been amazed in my own life. I actually had a couple of prophetic words about it years ago. And I was like, no, that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, what will I have to share with anybody? And you know what? God will, God's a great opportunist. He yes. will take advantage of experiences you've had in your life to help other people, especially if you've persevered and, and are going through to the other side, mm -hmm. then you can be a great encouragement to someone. 100%. So good. So, so good. Well, God bless you. We're going to put you in the green room and uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wasn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so glad that that she was able to join us today and to share her thoughts on her new book. And mm -hmm. want to encourage you to get the book. It will be a blessing to you to have this in your library and to read it and to have it a part of your heart. You know, I often I often think about the books I've read that led to defining moments in my mm -hmm. life. And and how it could be one idea from a book. It could be a 200, 300 page book even. And you got one idea, but that one idea could set you on a beautiful path that gets you into your destiny. And that's what I believe can happen here because the book is designed specifically for that to occur. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful that yes. uh, Dr. Jones was able to be with us today. So tonight we still have our uh, VIP coming up. It's happening in just a few minutes from now. And uh, we would love for you to join us if you can. And it's easy to join. The link will be in the comments there. And you, because you get all the videos from the three-day Build a New Comfort Zone Challenge, that is coming up right there. On Saturday, we are doing a live masterclass called Spiritual Warfare in the Courts of Heaven. I've never taught this before live. Um, I've taught it in bits and pieces, but this will be the first time of putting a comprehensive masterclass together on it. And one of the things I'm planning to do is a lot of doing, like there'll be teaching and then activation, teaching, activation. So people get used to doing it a new way. It's like if you've been used to praying and doing spiritual warfare one way all of your intercessory life, and then I come along and say, hey, you're doing it illegally and, and don't do what you're doing anymore. It's like, well, what do I do? 
what else can I do? I, I you're telling me I'm doing it illegally. Well, the, you are because you have all this backlash and counterattacks and all these things happening. And that is evidence to me that what you did wasn't necessarily wrong, but it was illegal. So now it's wrong, I suppose. But it's an illegal way to pray. And I'll show you why in this masterclass. And then show you the, the, the correct way to do it that works like gangbusters. That no backlash, you have peace. It's just the easiest thing in the world. But you need to understand how it works and why it works. And so, and then learn the process. And so we'll be doing that through repetition in each of the sessions. There'll be a repetition to it throughout the day, and it'll be a powerful time. And then Saturday night, I have this feeling that there is going to be an outpouring of the Spirit of God. There's going to be something going on on Saturday night in Lloyd Minster. So if you hmm. if you have someone that lives in the area and needs healing, needs deliverance, needs anything from God, get them to Lloyd Minster on Saturday. There's just this been a stirring in my heart that the spirit of God, he wants to, he wants to showcase something of the power of God on Saturday night. So looking forward to that. This would be wonderful. And then Sunday morning, we'll be sharing in the congregation service on Sunday morning with the Ark Foursquare church. And I'm just checking. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm just checking to see if they live stream their Sunday services. I don't, think they do i don't think they do no no so there won't be any video of this but there will be audio there will be an audio recording of the the uh master class how are we recording that no they Sorry, will be. I, I shouldn't have said that out loud <laughs> yeah, they're going to be doing it okay uh, so we're going to wrap this up for today god bless y'all uh, just a, a reminder kari put it in the comments here that there will not there will not be a broadcast on sunday because we'll be in Lloydminster or we'll be driving home. <laughs> yeah, won't be on time. Won't be on time, um, yeah. Also, if you don't have the God First process, grab it, grab it, grab it. Get it as quickly as you can because it'll help you to get free in your heart from all of the works mentality that you might have before God and toward your relationship with God. And then the Advanced Build a New Reality course is how to get everything you can out of everything God gave you. Now, he's given you exceeding great and precious promises that are powerful and life-transforming that will enable you to engage with the nature of God and escape the corruption that's in this world because of evil desires. Part of what we talk about in the, the course is uh, good desires and how to develop them and because it's important. And all that stuff's important. It's in the Word for a reason. And uh, as a result of good desires, your desires, in league with God and aligned with God's desire, man, nothing's impossible. Beautiful things can happen. All right, so we're going to wrap this up, and we'll see you on the VIP in half an hour. Bye-bye now.